Okay, so what I always do when I'm painting is I always make observations and I stated this before. So what I wanna look is I wanna make sure that I can see my shades okay. I think they're looking great right now. So I don't think I have to do anything else. For you, when you walked out your float, if it was streaking, and what's really nice is because of the base coat color, it's not going to show that much, but if it was streaking, you could go in and you could add another application of this value. And every application of value that you put in using the same color will just make it a little bit more smooth, a little bit more even. I know this confuses some people sometimes because they like to get in and get out one float. I don't paint like that. What I do is I make observations and, um, and that's why you'll see I never use a mop when I'm floating either. Um, I control my values and I build multiple applications and then I don't need to use a mop. But that's what's fun about taking classes from various artists is you learn all kinds of different ways. Okay, so now let's work a little bit on the plaid um, and we can also transfer on the heart onto the vest. So I'm going to just use my soap stone and if you want to transfer on your other heart using your, well actually where is I should show you the right way, shouldn't I, girls? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we'll use white graphite paper. And I do believe my instructions called for both. I do have some tape up at the top, so I should take this down. Let's go ahead and transfer on our heart. This is such a simple little design, but I put a lot of thought into this design. The, meth the message it has was definitely thought about because I think what we need right now more than anything is to spread a little love around. It also works for Valentine's Day. I also wanted to keep it as simple as possible knowing I would be teaching the group but this is all because of you guys that I'm teaching this. You all worked so hard inviting your friends last month. And I don't know if you saw how many, we're headed towards 11,000 girls. My goodness. So I've got my opaque red and what I wanna show you. So again, how do I um, base coat? I outline the outside edge. Then I come in and fill in. But what I really love about um, the opaque red is it just covers so easily. Let me get a flat brush. So this may need two coats. Your sand, if you're using Santa red, it's gonna need a lot of coats. So we'll be going back and forth between getting these hearts in and doing other things. So my graphite is showing and I don't care about that. I really don't want this to grow. I'd rather have my graphite show and then just wipe that up in a little bit than to have my heart grow. I 
I hope you all enjoyed December. It was a tremendous amount of work gathering all those prizes and doing all that we did. But the we have um, 16 admins that helped me run this group. And we all felt as though December was going to be hard on so many of you. There's a lot of people living by themselves. There's a lot of people who could not see their families during the time because of what's going on in our world right now. And so we wanted to make sure that you guys had a fun time. And I think you all did. And by the way, if some of you have not gotten your prizes, please contact me. Um, I know there's one lady, um, Ann Harrison, if you're watching this, you want a free class and you've not contacted me. So I've tried messaging you twice. So let me know if you, um, if you are hearing this. Okay, I will have to let this dry and then I'll come in and, and repeat those. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to draw on um, the pattern onto the scarves. When someone pointed out to me on your instructions, under number four, it didn't make it any sense. It said using a light head pencil in the pattern to the headband and scarf. What I was trying to tell you is using a, a very light touch um, in your hand, we're going to freehand the pencil onto the scarf and the hat. So if you have to transfer it on, that's fine. I would prefer for you to just use a, a pencil. So let's just start. You all know approximately what a quarter inch is, unless you're from a, a different country where you're using metrics. And I can't help you there because that was a long time ago that I learned all about metrics. So anyway, these are going to be approximately a quarter of an inch. So let's just start at the top. You can all draw a very light line. See that? Let me zoom in. Okay. So we have a line there. Then we're going to draw another line like that. And I'm using ever so light of a touch. Then we'll have another line here and one right here. Right there is the um, scarf. So I'm going to be careful that I don't get into that. Then we just do approximately quarter inches all the way over there. Easy peasy, right? Right. So what we're going to do is start in the middle because in the middle, they're fairly flat. This kind of, um, it's kind of um, dense in a little bit here, but we won't worry about that. As we come around and look at your fin finished piece right now and or your line drawing. Because now they start curving a little bit. Okay, we all got those. Now we're going to come back this way. And now the curves are going to go the opposite direction. So over here, they're curving this way. Over here, they're curving this way. Suppose I should have drawn this in first. There we go. Okay. Now when I'm on the scarf, on the upper part of the scarf, we'll start over here. And again, we just remember that these are all approximately a quarter of an inch. When you freehand them, chances are yours are gonna be different every time you do it. And that's fine. No one's ever going to see their original. OK. 
Okay, so we've got those vertical lines, right? We're doing good. Now comes the scary part. Now we're gonna make horizontal lines. And remember I said that they should all be about a quarter inch. Well, this hat band was so little, what I wanted to do is make this one a quarter inch. And so we've got two about an eighth of an inch wide like that. Okay. Thank you, Linda. I'm glad you guys are liking him. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we've got about an eighth of an inch here and just follow the curve. Do you see how I'm not pulling one line, how I'm kind of pity pat pulling the line? It's how I draw everything. I float like this, I pull lines like this. Because to try to do something in one sweep for me is very difficult. So let's see how I've got him. I've got one starting over here. Then it's coming down over here. And again, I'm just thinking quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. And then I'm following the shape of the scarf. So easy to do. Easy peasy. I'm gonna give you some time to do that. And when you're done with that, go in and put a second coat onto your hearts. And I hope the pace I'm going is pretty good. I'm trying to take you all into consideration and in that some of you are what I call my speedy Gonzaleses and probably are painting too at the same time. And many of you are not quite so fast as them. I tend to be a fast painter. So I try to really slow it down in my classes. I hope you're getting your lines in on your scarfs okay. Make sure they're the nice and light. What you can do is if you don't, if, if they come in too heavy or if you've transferred them and they're not nice and light, what you can go in and do, and I'll do this a lot, is I'll just pounce up and down to remove as much excess graphite as possible. And you can see those are even lighter than these now. But I can still see them. I mean, you want them light, but you need to be able to see them. had talked about the microperms and how they come and I said I thought maybe they came in four sizes they actually come in just these three and I did get this online um, just to see how much they would be and they come in the one and the three and the five and I think this was $9.99 from Amazon so um, they're about three dollars a piece which isn't too bad but um, again those have the watercolor ink 
excuse me, not the watercolor ink, the waterproof ink. Okay, the heart on the hat. <laughs> I'm thinking at this time, yeah, we can go ahead and put that on there because we've got the shading then. Much easier to add him now than try to shade it around him. So I left this off for the same reason I left off the hearts on the vest is generally what I find is in a classroom setting, if you ask your students to go around things, um, you don't get a nice application of shades and highlights. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a wash of color. If you have a bubble palette, you know, one of those plastic bubble palettes, that's fine to do. Um, it would probably be better to use Santa red as opposed to the opaque red because it's easier to make a wash of color. But I really want this to just be, I really want this just to be a tint. So you can see that there's, it's almost all water. And I'm going to mix enough where I can put this on all of the squares and allow them to dry. I'm gonna keep this off to the side and keep it away from my um, flow strength that still looks a little strong. So what I can do is I can move my palette knife around and I can see if I can see the background coming through. It is much easier to use one of those little plastic ones um, where there's a little bubble, bubble and you can isolate it. Then I'm gonna switch into a smaller brush, um, a number six or a number four flat would be great because that's approximately a quarter of an inch. What I wanna do is I want to come in and I'm gonna come right next to the bird. See how light that is? This is truly transparent color. And we're gonna come down and we're doing every other square or every other stripe. Then we're gonna come down over here and do the same thing. I don't spend a lot of times playing with these. When you're working with a wash of color, if you overstroke it, it's gonna look messy. It's gonna look streaky. This should almost look like, oh, with the white background, it's almost gonna look like pink in some areas, even though it should be just transparent red.
And again, if you need to go into a smaller brush, you can use a number three round also. But what I find is if I can just swoop in with one brush as I'm doing here, I won't get it as many streaks. The packet, yes, the past packet is still available on my website, which is debbiecole.com. So now once you get all the vertical ones done, we're gonna do the horizontal ones, but warning, look at your picture or look at what I'm doing. Cause these aren't, these aren't like regular checks. These are more like Buffalo checks. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my, whoops. I got a little bit full strength paint in there. Now we're going to pull it this way and I'm putting the horizontal ones in. looks very messy, but it's not going to look messy when we're done with it. What's really messy is my palette because my red is going all over the place. So I think I have, here we go, that's good. This paint's coming in a little bit more opaque, but it's okay. And that's because my paint's sliding all over the place on my palette. Okay, over here. So now what I'm saying is this one's coming down over here. And that will be light. Almost looks like a picnic table right now. You know, like a picnic tablecloth. Okay, so then this one came right down the middle. And while you're waiting, you can add some more opaque paint. If you're not done with doing that, you can add some more paint onto your hearts.
I'm giving you a little bit of time to get this in. Again, make sure you're using nice thin paint. It's not, it should look almost pinkish because of the white background showing through. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the opaque color. And hopefully you have the opaque red out. I'm sure you do since you have your um, hearts that you've been basic coating in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do every other check now and make sure that we fill that in. So what I'm gonna do is, and again, you can look at your photo to see which is filled in or not. These two will be, and yeah, the red is right next to your bird. So notice in the center, none of these are gonna be bright red. I love plaid. I'm so glad that plaid is popular again. A lot of my old teddy bear designs have plaid. Okay. Okay. Then on his neck, again, on a scarf, what we're gonna do is we're filling in the little squares. Do not pull this all the way across. Nice steady hands. And again, I go around the outside edges, then I fill in. I agree, Kathy. She says, every part makes them cuter and cuter. I think it's amazing how we'll take something that looks flat as a pancake and just as we shade and highlight and add uh, all the details, how it just comes to life. So then again, make sure that you're only putting it in the squares that are supposed to be solid with this opaque red. As soon as you put the opaque red in, it makes it look, the other ones look a lot nicer. And then we'll clean up edges by doing lining in a little bit. And again, because I did not transfer them, my checks are gonna be a little different than the original. And that's perfectly fine. It's funny, as I'm looking at this check, I just had a whole new design come in my head. I am seeing a little snowman. 
with a picnic basket. Hi, Deborah. I just see your question. How do I join to paint with this group? Well, if you're seeing this, you're in the group and you are painting with us. Oh, are you guys giving me new ideas? S snow cones for sale? Ha, love it. Okay. While the wash is drying and all of this is drying, let's go to this little birds and we're gonna do some outlining. Um, so let's see if I can zoom in even further. Okay. And there we go. If you have some honey brown, I wish my vision was so good so as I'm looking at this, I could see as up close as I just zoomed in for all of you. What I'm going to do is just take honey brown and I'm going to just touch it down kind of like in the middle. And then I'm gonna bring it out just a little bit. It almost makes like a little triangle. I'm barely touching down. And then we're gonna let that dry. And that's with honey brown. You could, this is why some of you asked if you could make the snowman smaller. And I said, yes, but these birds are already so difficult to do um, because they're so little. I suggested you might not want to do that. So now what I'm going to, um, okay, there's another question. How do you get notifications about the classes? If you look at the announcements, the very first um, post of the month, each month I have a list of all the classes. Then if you look at the announcements, I have each individual class listed or they're under events. So you can find out two different ways how you can see. When I'm done with this, I'm gonna put this under units. So we try to keep the um, group as organized as possible. So I'm gonna come in and I am going to simply, now remember, we can touch, see if this will work on here. We can touch very, 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 very lightly. Well, one, cause it's on the plastic. We can touch very lightly or we can touch very heavy. And I'm gonna to touch very lightly and I'm gonna just create a little bit of texture. I'm gonna outline the scarf. I'm using ever so light of a touch. And that was just like little zigzag things. I put little ruffles in on their chest to indicate feathers. So pretty much I'm shading and adding texture with this brush. 
to these birds. Now I did indicate that there was furry hat bands here. So I zigzaggy and make texture using this marker. And then around the outside edge of the hat, I do the same thing. These are very small little lines. When I come into the face, I make two little dots. And then I pulled a little line because that's how I make eyes. And if you just want to make dots in the scope of what's important, that's all you really need. Then I did outline make a little triangle for their mouth. So for those of you who made it smaller, God bless you. And I also added some just little um, fringe on his scarf. That's how I did those bar birds. That's all that was done to those birds. Didn't even shade or highlight them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna thin some graphite. And I'm going to pull lines with my liner brush. For those of you who do not do well with a liner brush, you could use your identipen for this, but the lines will be a lot darker than my lines because they'll be the same black as the identipen. I'm going to thin the paint with water to make a cream or ink-like consistency. I need to get a different liner brush. This is my bad liner brush. Sometimes when I am teaching or for other reasons, I leave my brush in water. And I don't know if you can see how this brush is permanently curled. It's from sitting in the water tub. What I can do is come back in um, with the same um, technique that Dee Silver taught us when she was here. I just haven't taken the time to do that. But you dip it in hot water and reshape it and it turns out fine. But for now, I want one that's nice and straight. What I'm going to do is we're going to first, I always try to make things logical. So the first thing we're going to do using ever so light of a touch is we're going to come down and we're on the right outside edge and we've got graphite in our brain, just coming down and pulling vertically. I'll go ahead and do some the outside there too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull vertically here also, and I'm using a nice light touch. If I were to press really hard, I would get a really thick line. We don't want thick lines, we want nice thin lines. When I load my brush, it has about the same amount of paint on it. So it almost looks like it is just the brush with water in it. I don't overload my liner brush. It's just as easy to go back and reload than it is to try to fix mistakes from having too much paint in your brush. I'm gonna go ahead right here and put a line there just so we can see right now where that scarf is starting. That line will diminish when we come in and shade. So again, I'm pulling horizontal lines right now. The horizontal lines are easier because they're shorter.
people always ask me, what kind of liner brush do you use? Well, I like a script liner, but I didn't start out liking a script liner. Now I like the softness I get with a script liner. But my answer always is liner brushes really are very personal, just like underwear or lingerie. Some people love uh, a short liner. Some people like me like a script liner. So I don't think there's one size that fits all. Looking better already. See how those lines are um, cleaning it up. Okay, so now we're going to turn him. And we're going to pull all the long lines. Now, here's what I want to say to you. If you can't pull one long line like that, you can pull and stop it right there, can't you? And then you can start it and stop it right there. You don't have to pull one long line like that. You know what you can control with your brush and what you can't control. And what's really nice is with all these checks, you can have a start and stop point. So again, this is really long. If, if you want to stop it every couple checks, you can do that. You can change the position of your hand then. I have been working with Priscilla Hauser. You girls are gonna love her so much. Um, but she was listening to my prep video and she said, oh my goodness, Miss Debbie, you're just so different than I am. I'm so loud and boisterous. You're so gentle and quiet, which cracked me up, but you are just, she's just such a hoot. Wait till you hear her, hear her teaching. She just has so much ex excitement and so much joy when it comes to painting and I, Love working with her. Okay, let's go on and do the scarf. We'll do the outside edge. Well, I hope these lines are cleaning everything up for you. He's getting there, isn't he? Okay, so now I did add some fringe on the outside areas. So I did use graphite. And if you want to pull them now lines, you can do that. So as I find my liner brush. So what I did is I simply, let's just actually put some little dots along here. And then what you'll do is just pull fringe right from those dots. 
If you can't do this with the graphite and liner brush, go ahead and use the Identa pen. That's fine. I love line work. I love creating textures. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to transfer on the lettering onto your um, hearts. I'm going to use a substone. So essentially what I have is a really funky L. I have an O. V and an E. And what we'll do is we'll use our Identa pen and we're gonna just go ahead and line that in. And again, I'm using ever so light of a touch. The Identa pen does not like substone. Note to self, don't do this again. So you can see how I did the outside up first. And I will do that when I'm doing lettering. And then I'll just come back in and put the areas that should be thicker. Yeah, it's interesting, the soapstone is repelling the ink. Okay. Then what I can try to do is use the fat end oops, that's dirty, to fill it in. So I use the thin side to pull the lettering. Now in the thick areas, I'm filling them in with the fat end of the Identa pen. You can also use lamp black paint and do it that way. Yeah, what's happening is this side's not wanting to work because of the substance. And then as soon as we're going, we're done with putting that in, we're gonna use our red and our liner brush. I have to put out some new red. And we're going to attach the um, We're gonna attach the lines, but 
Um, I was trying to think if we should do something else first, but that would be fine. We are gonna do some glazing and add some depth to the snowman. Glazing is different than floating. Okay, so what I wanna do first, is just decide where this is going. You can transfer this on or you can just wing it. I'm going to wing it. So I'm going to first put the dot from where the uh, bow is going to be. Then I put one loop, the second loop. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're simply going to now connect it to the heart here. Then we're also going to continue as we wanna think about where that line is and we're gonna connect it this way. I'm gonna connect it right here. Again, as if this was all flowing together And now I'm going to turn this so I don't get my hands in the wet meat. And we'll make our little heart, our little bow over here. And then we'll connect it. See what I did is I didn't put it in the right place. So I'm gonna really take this line off really quick. I'm gonna let that all dry before I mess up everything else. Then what you can do while that's all drying is you can either use your brush or you can use your dental pen and you can go around the outside edges. This was fairly thick. So I'm using the thick end of my dental pen to go around the outside edges. And that was another reason why I didn't care if my graphite was showing a little bit, because I knew I was going to do this. Okay, let's see if I can get in. And pull this. Right there. That is looking cute, cute, cute. Let's do some glazing. Um well, first we didn't float any of this in. So let's float some Snow White in on the bottom and get as big of a brush as you can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've got my one inch brush in my hand and I'm loading it with Snow White and I'm going to 
float that way. And then we're gonna come in and just float over here. And I'll walk it out a little bit. Many of you are saying a lot of the details make a um, big difference. And you're right, everything we do from this point forward is just gonna add so much personality to him, so much more depth. What I want to do is add a little bit more highlight to his hat. Turn around. I'm going to dampen it. And if you remember, we first the first application we put in, and it was with slate gray, is we simply dry brushed it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a zigzag back to back float. I love doing shines this way. But when I dampen it, what I did is I had a lake on here. We don't want to have a lake. We want to have it just be damp. So the amount of water you put on is very important. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just shake my brush, shake my brush like I've had way too much coffee this morning. And then I'm going to flip it over and meet it and shake it going the other way. And that's how I did that pretty shine on there. Same color, but because we are using a um, float instead of a dry brushing, it's gonna come in a little bit brighter. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to glaze some areas. I want to put out um, graphite so that we can glaze um, the snowman and the scarf and a few other things. Now, when I... I want to show you the difference between floating and glazing. They're both loaded, corner loaded. Um, so a lot of people get confused. And I think there are also a lot of teachers who their floating is a glaze because it becomes very transparent. So let me put some black in my brush right now and hopefully that's going to show up okay. So this is a float. I have opaque and transparent to semi-transparent to transparent paint. With a glaze, what I do is I work the paint into my brush so that I only have semi-transparent paint. See the difference? It's both black, but this it's like Someone said, what's the difference between a wash of color and a um, glaze? Well, glazing, you're able to control where the paint is. Let me do this again, because I, I think I worked it in a little bit too far. So glazing still has um, some value to it, but it's semi-transparent and it has a clean edge. Where a wash of color, it would be in your entire brush. They're both semi-transparent applications of paint. Very important that it does look does not look like this, and it looks like this for the next step work we're going to do. Because now we're going to add some shading to the snowman and to the um, scarf. And if you come in with two 
dark of a color and we're going to be using graphite. You have to make sure you really work it in your, your um, brush really well. And then what I really love about glazing is it goes so fast. You don't have to worry if you're walking out a float of a glaze because well, what's happening is my graphite's been sitting here and it doesn't want to work into my brush. There we go. So you do need fresh paint when you're creating a glaze. And I'm going to put some fresh graphite out because without my lights on here, it's drying really fast. So what glazing is, is I'm side loading it as if to float, but I keep working it into my brush until it's semi-transparent. There's no opaqueness to it. That is different than a float. So see how light this is, but see how I can make it just a little bit darker Why am I using a glaze instead of a float? Does anybody know? Well, I'll tell you that if I were to float right now, it would cover up the plaid we created. The plaid itself created form, the way I had you put it in. It created form. So all this is doing is adding to the form and separating some areas that need to be separated. I'm gonna turn this. So even though I'm coming over this with graphite, you can still say that that is a red check there and it's just a little bit darker now. Or if I came in with a float of graphite, you would definitely know that it was gray. So I'm gonna come in and I'm also gonna do the same thing on his forehead. And that's really gonna set that hat on him. For those of you who do not understand this concept, I have a variety of videos on um, YouTube. One's all about glazing and the difference between glazing and washing. All of the techniques I've used today, I have special videos on, on my YouTube channel. And you can just go sit and watch them and practice them and do all kinds of fun stuff with them. What I like about putting the little bit of gray on here is it stops looking as so blue. Okay, so now we're gonna go underneath and we can completely go underneath here. I'm going to come in under his um, vest onto the snow, glazing that area. We'll do the same over here. So I have glazed all around here on his face and down and around. I have glazed this entire area, the outer perimeter. I've glazed down here. And I've glazed over here. On the upper scarf, I glazed right here and here so far.
Okay, so now we're going to go down um, here. And this is where you really be able to see a huge difference in your snowman. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to just pull that glaze down onto the snow to make that little dip. Right here. So I just glazed here and I pulled it right there to make that little dip. Glad you guys are enjoying this. Okay, then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back up and um, I'm gonna glaze right behind right here. And I'm just letting the snowman dry down here a little bit. So I just went right above his hat band. Then I'm gonna come down with this glaze in my brush and I'm gonna go underneath his vest. And after I come underneath his vest, I'll come over and complete the other half, the other side. I think it's interesting how glazing him with a graphite makes him look more white. So again, this is where I come in and I'm like, well, where do I need to do something? Well, I think I need to add a little bit more depth here and a little bit more underneath his chin. And maybe I'll reinforce this a second time here. I think I need to come underneath this scarf a little bit more. And these judgment calls, these are things you have to learn to do on your own because you don't often have someone in your painting room with you saying, oh, you know, we should do this a second time or whatever. So it really helps to learn all these, how to make your own judgment calls. I think I'm gonna, there's something I did not do on my original. I want to show you on this one. I'm hoping we have time for that. We have about a half an hour left and I think I'm gonna have time to show you that. Okay, we're gonna put out, if you need some fresh um, white, um, snow white, you're gonna put some fresh snow white out. And I'm gonna use my number six dry brush again, or number four, oh, actually I have number two. What I need to do is come in and put a little bit of highlights on the scarf. And all I'm doing is dragging Actually, this is my number two brush that I have. I dragged it there, and then I'm gonna come right here, 
Drag a little highlight here. And then I also dragged some right over here. I'm glad you really liked the plaid, thank you. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a number three round and we're gonna take the snow white and we're going to add some snow. This is scary for a lot of people to do. So I've loaded a lot of paint on my brush. I've overloaded it. This is exactly what you're not supposed to do. But for snow, it works really well. So then what I do is I just kind of set it down. And I see that there's a little bit of water in there and that's fine. It will give me some variation. We're also going to put a little bit on his hat brim. Put some in front of the birdies. That will really add some depth to him. We'll add some snow to the arms, AKA branches. This is what I mean, just do them randomly. You're not gonna have it all over everything. I even put a little bit on, of course I did, I put a little bit on the ribbon. We'll put some on the hearts themselves. I have substone in mine. I'm not worried about that because substone comes off with water. I think the only thing consistently consistently with everything I do is, even with this, I use ever so light of a touch. On his hat, I did have some stitches. I just took my little identipen. My identipen's not happy because I use soapstone with it. There we go. So I put stitches like that. And then with the fat sign, I pulled some like that. Okay, and the one thing, yes, I have time. I have two things to show you. Okay, so one thing I did not do, because I didn't know if I would have time, is if you want to have stitches, along his vest, you could put stitches. So you could do this with the Snow White, you could do this with red, 
Um, so the first thing I do is, here, I'm gonna put some dots. So I didn't put this in the original one, but it's so much fun to add all these little details. And I'm thinning my Snow White with water. Let's zoom in. So what I'll do then is simply pull like three or four stitch lines heading towards those dots. Isn't that cute? And it just adds a little bit more detail to his little vest. That's me. And then I, I could put some down over here. I think I'd use a darker gray stitching too, but I wanted to show you that if you wanted to add more details to him, you could. Then I have one last thing to show you, and it's got nothing to do with him. But I just created this. If you're liking snowmen, this is called Chilling with My Snowmies. He's just finished him yesterday, so I don't even have him up on my website again, but I will. And what's really nice about this is this is a little bit of a second step to doing this. A lot of the same things, elements I used in here. I developed the snow the same way. Um, and then the plaid's a little bit more challenging. And then we have some really cute features like the little bubbles because this little birdie's in a spa. And this little birdie's dropping snowmen, or excuse me, he's dropping marshmallows into his cocoa. Um, just a fun design. And I'll have that up on my website probably by Monday morning. Um, but hang on two seconds. I want to thank you all for joining me today. What a fun class this was. And we finished it. I said that we would take three hours to do it. Thank you all for hanging in with me. And um, more than anything, thank you all for just being part of our Creative Innovations community. We just love having you here. And we love that you all are so enthusiastic about everything we do. Um, we have a lot of awesome lessons coming up, but this was the first one that was three hours. We weren't, weren't sure how it was going to go. Thank you for all the love. Thank you, you guys. But we've had over 200 people the entire three hours, and I thank you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And what's really important is from this point forward, that painting just always brings you joy and spread that joy with others. So... We'll see you in the next one. Can you just oh. mute it before turning it off? Seems okay, have a good day, everybody.